I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. My beloved, great is our God. He is the God of Israel. He is the Trinity God. He is the one who operates and hears our prayers. He is the one who is present. The Lord has shown a woman who was here and thought that the Lord was not hearing her prayers. She was thinking, God doesn't remember me, but God remembers you. The Lord has to tell her, He remembers you. He's a great God, and He brought you here to bless your life. Blessed be the Lord for this. My beloved, we're going to open the word of the Lord in the book of Nehemiah. The moment of restoration. It's time of restoration. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4. We're going to read the biblical text, which is from verse 20 onwards. I would like to invite the church to stand up for a few instants. Nehemiah 4, verse 20 onward. It says the following. Onde ouvirdes o som da buzina, ali vos ajuntareis conosco. O nosso Deus pelejará por nós. Assim trabalhávamos na obra, e metade deles tinha as. In the same. So, so we labor in the work and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at the night in Jerusalem, that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for, for watch, watching. My brethren, the time of restoration. The Lord has spoken to us many times. Because there is a world that is trying to destroy and is destroying the lives and spiritual life of the people. There is a gospel that has already opened the doors for the world and it opened wide the doors for the world. A gospel that is already destroyed. But God has called us to live the work of the Holy Spirit. God has called us to hear the eternal gospel. A gospel that is the power of God that transforms man's life. God called us for this gospel. A gospel that doesn't want anything with the world, but a gospel that lives in sanctity with the Spirit. A true gospel a gospel that the angel, that John saw the angel flying in the sky, bringing on his hands to proclaim to every nation, tribe, lang language, to every man. This gospel is being proclaimed. This gospel, gospel has reached us. And this gospel is the one that God has for each one of us. For you who entered here tonight, that's the gospel. So now it's time for restoration. Why? Because, as we said in the beginning, there are people that live in a gospel that is materialistic, a commercial gospel. Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, it speaks a lot of uh, restoration because the situation of Israel at that time was the same. Walls and gates were destroyed in Jerusalem. The situation of Jerusalem was terrible. Every type of invasion and attacks. Nehemiah made the decision let us reconstruct, 
let us restore. It's necessary for us to restore. It's necessary for us to rescue. It's necessary for us to preserve Jerusalem because pre Jerusalem is the place of the blessing. Jerusalem is the place of the blessing of God. Jerusalem is the place of the Ark of the Covenant. We need to preserve Jerusalem. And the reconstruction begins, the, attack, the attacks came, the opposition. The text here speaks about Tabalash Tobias. The oppositions rose up, but the people prayed and God gave the victory. We pray to our God. We put a watchman against them day and night and God preserved his people. Farewell. God wants to preserve. But the, the theme of this message, the emphasis is on the text that we just read in first verse. It says the following, the place where I came, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. My brother, your visitor, you are here tonight. We need to hear the sound of the trumpet. The sound of the trumpet is what matters the most to in our midst. In our midst, it doesn't matter the sound of words, being eloquent, men of powerful prayer. That doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is the sound of the trumpet. Especially for you who visit us, that already knows about this topic. The sound of the trumpet some speaks of the, the blow of the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the trumpet that was used at that time was made out of, from the times of the Exodus, from the, deli from the departure of the people from Egypt, was an object, it was made out of uh, the horn of a, a lamb, was, a, was uh, an adult lamb. Lamb had to be killed. The horn had to be removed. It had to be clean. And then the priest would pick up this horn. It's called shofar. And it, as he blew the shofar, the sound of the, the trumpet would come out. And the people would receive the instruction. So Israel knew the sound of the trumpet, the sound of the shofar. The children of Israel also knew. The adolescents also knew. The youth of Israel also knew. The women and men of Israel knew the sound of the trumpet, the sound of the, the shofar. Every, every sound had a different meaning. They didn't have a microphone at the time. So the priest, they would sound the shofar, that, and that sound would mean, for example, get up uh, and f get up from, the, from your camp. Disassemble the camp. Oh, it was estimated that Jewish people were more than a million people. So uh, as they were walking the desert, you now there was another sound of the trumpet. So now the new sound was to, for people to set up camp. There was no doubt. There was no doubt. It was not somebody that saying something and another saying something else. One hears something and the other hears something else. It was on a single sound, the sound of the chauffeur, the sound of the, the trumpet and the people of God was guided, they walked in the desert with security, hearing the sound of the shofar, the sound of the trumpet. What a wonderful thing, what a blessing. And in Nehemiah was the same thing. When you hear whatever, you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to, the, to us there. To, today, uh, the people of God is, is, is not different. We are guided by this blow of the Holy Spirit. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit that is speaking to us. And the shofar, made out of the horn of the lamb, pointed out to the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus, the lamb was killed, the horn was removed, cleaned up, so that the sound would come out. My brother, Jesus went to the cross for us. Jesus died. He was buried. And on the third day, He was resurrected. He is alive. He is alive. And because Jesus is alive, 
the Holy Spirit is speaking in our midst. I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things. This Holy Spirit, the sound of the trumpet, is the sound of the trumpet. Whatever you, you hear, the sound of the trumpet. We can say with joy, with security. We can say glorifying the Lord that in this place, the sound of the trumpet is being heard. The other places, are they hearing? I don't know. In the corner there, in the gathering of people there on the corner, is the sound the trumpet being heard? Look, maybe they are not hearing. In our midst, the Holy Spirit is speaking. And the Spirit is speaking to us tonight. He is speaking to you that our God is powerful. He has already spoke to us through the praises. He spoke to us only through the reading of the Word of God. Because the Word is a life. The Word is living. So whatever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. I read the church is the body of Christ. And tonight, it is a call that's been made here. You are here in the voice of the Holy Spirit in this place. Rally to us there. Our place is in the work of the Holy Spirit. Your place is in the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, if you are not hearing, you need to pray. Oh, I need a blessing. It is individual. I don't hear uh, on behalf of the pastor when you're here. Nobody here on my behalf. I hear. Because I have my, my own ears. You, Braden, here because you have your own ears. It's personal. It's particular. Oh, I'm not here. I don't want to hear. It's, it's, everyone's right. But the Holy Spirit is speaking. The trumpet is being sounded. God is operating. God is giving you opportunity. Gather with us. Rally to us. When we're speaking to gather with us, we, we're speaking about gathering in a place, a church that is the body of Christ. We're not here preaching the name of church or denomination. We're not interested in on this. We're interested in serving the Lord. Gather with us. Hearing the sound of the trumpet, gather with us. Because our God, our God will fight for us. The one who fights, one who works, one who does want to operate is the God Almighty, this God of Israel. The God of Israel can guide his people during the desert. The God of Israel is guiding his church in this desert. The Holy Spirit is speaking with us. The Son is present. Our God will fight for us. He is fighting his, his battle, his own battles. And the word says the following. So we labored in the work. In the work of the Lord, we work. And half of the men ha held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. It was all day. Vigilance is continuous. Vigilance is permanent. Vigilance is always I heard the sound of the trumpet once. I accepted Jesus. I was in the presence of the Lord, but I was not vigilant. If you did, you're not vigilant, the attack will come. Oh, but I heard the sound of the trumpet. God spoke to me, but I didn't gather with the body. We are not going to be able to withstand. Well, it to us, but you need to have the weapons, the spears. From daybreak until the stars appeared, is the vigilance. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at night in Jerusalem. My brother, I'm going to stop here for a minute. Stay in Jerusalem. It was prophetic. Because when Jesus, when he went, uh, went, went brought to heaven, at that moment he 
he speaks, he gather his disciples and says, stay in Jerusalem until from above will be um, uh, receive power from the Spirit. Stay in Jerusalem. Pastor, I heard the sound of the trumpet. God spoke to me. But I walk outside of Jerusalem once in a while. Every once in a while, I go out there. My beloved, if God spoke to you once, if He's speaking to you tonight, it's for you to stay in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is the place of the blessing. Jerusalem is the place of salvation. Jerusalem is the place of the rescue. Jerusalem is a place where God speaks, where the ark is present. It's the seat of David. It's the seat of the great king. Jerusalem, we're speaking of the capital. The seat of Israel there. No, it is spiritual. At that moment, it was. But now it is spiritual. Staying in Jerusalem is staying in the place of the blessing. He's staying in the place of the blessing. Until from above you will be received power. And the pouring out the, the Holy Spirit. My brethren, who is in Jerusalem is filled with the Holy Spirit. And whoever preserves us is the Holy Spirit. There is no one that can withstand The, the ones who can withstand are the ones who have the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we'll be consumed. But the word says, stay, stay at night in Jerusalem. Each one stay in Jerusalem. That they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So in the moment of darkness, in the moment in the world is leaving this turbulence disturbance it is time for you to stay in Jerusalem so that you may not perish so that may, you may not die so that the darkness may not reach you but so the light of Jesus may light up your life and shine in your heart and, so, and stay at night in guard and during the day you stay working for him my brethren, there is a lot of work in the kingdom of God. And the faithful church works, evangelizes, proclaim Maranatha, the Lord Jesus is coming. The church proclaims there is a great work to be done. God calls, him, calls us to his work. God is calling us to his work. We're coming close to an end. And when I say that, we're finishing I'm really finishing I know that there are pastors that are saying uh, they're closing uh, finishing they're finishing uh, three four five times and the fifth time they begin to finish I know a couple of pastors there that do that sometimes I do this myself <laughs> it's a, a problem of pastors but the word says the following so neither I my brethren my servants nor the man of the guard. So he put everybody there. God, who followed me, took off our clothes. So my brother, God gave us once garments of salvation. One day, God gave new clothes. The dirty clothes have been put aside. God gave you brand new clothes. One day, Jesus gave you new clothes. You can glorify the Lord Jesus. Amen. Today, Jesus wants to give new clothes to people. Some people who are here. But don't let go of your clothes. Don't let go of the blessing that God gave you freely. The greatest blessing. The greatest blessing that God has for man is salvation. And salvation is in the glorious person of Jesus because Jesus is the only and sufficient Savior. There are people that say, oh, the greatest blessing for me is a new job. Oh, it's a blessing also. Oh, the greatest blessing for me is a healing from an infirmity. Oh, it's also a blessing. But the greatest blessing for me 
is res to resolve a familial problem. No, oh, God will take care of it. But the greatest is salvation. Because salvation is for this life, but it is also for, eterni for eternity. Salvation is lived here in sanctification, but the assurance of salvation will be revealed and an eternal place for you and for the faithful church. Don't let go of your clothing. Oh, I don't have it yet, Pastor, but today God wants to give you garments of salvation. Don't let go of your clothes. Except that everyone took them off. Everyone had water and weapons. We have to use the, the resource of salvation so that you can be vigilant. How can you preserve your salvation? Praying, fasting, going on early dawns, praising, reading the word, serving the Lord. You have, we have weapons. We have spiritual weapons. Pleading for the blood of Jesus. We have weapons. Each one had their weapon. And they also had water. Because the water of life Jesus is the fountain of living waters that is being flowing every day, every day and is quenching our the thirst of our soul. Our soul thirsts for God. Amen. Receive a blessing. Glorify God. It's a night of restoration. A night of rescue. Receive salvation that He has to give us.
Glórias a Jesus. I feel I can invite the brand to stand up. We praise the Lord for a word that has been revealed. For salvation and deliverance in your house. Praise the Lord, because you, you are only God. For you all the honor and all the glory. Your servant God, Lord. That's why we praise you. For the prayers. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. We praise you for grace in the name of Jesus. Beloved, the Lord also was showing a woman who is in the service, and she's going through a very difficult moment in her life. And this difficulty has caused her to stop 
from serving the Lord. But that's not what the Lord has for her. The Lord is saying that she needs to be in Jerusalem. But staying in Jerusalem is not to be standing still. It's with the weapons on the hands, it's working, and it's rebuilding Jerusalem and take possession of what, what God has for us. The life that is, stays standing still ends up being left behind. Salvation is dynamic. Salvation, every day we need to fight for our own salvation. Whoever is standing still is being left behind. So here is the advice from the Lord for this woman. Embrace this opportunity that God is giving you. We are always going to have trials. Look to heavens. Look to Jerusalem. Look to the Lord. The Lord can do all things. Don't let yourself be defeated by the tiredness and the difficulties of this life. Fight for a blessing. Amen. We're going to pray finishing the service. If you have identified yourself with the gift, spiritual gift that have been described here, with the message, with the song that have been sang, we want to pray with you, for you. The pastors are here, the deacons, the ushers, the women, my, our sisters. Don't leave this place without receiving a blessing from the Lord. Let us close our eyes. Lord God, we praise your holy name. Because truly, you are in this place. And your presence is in your hearts. And that joy that we are feeling, Lord, uh, overflows us. Or the joy that we have in being your presence is what causes us to go back once every time to our presence, Lord. And cause us to want to be near you, Lord. This is what causes us to want to be in Jerusalem. And that's what causes us to desire the return of the Lord Jesus. Take us home in peace. They receive our adoration and our praise and said, so that we receive a week of blessings in your presence. Is a prayer to say in the name of Jesus. And your name is say that a, a wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The congregation may sit down. We're coming to the end of the service. You just need to raise your hand and we're going towards you. There are ushers out on the back. The pastors are here and we have more ushers and deacons here and the sisters can also help. The praise group is going to be singing soft, softly and now we're going to begin the period of assistance.
irmãos, é, vou matar a curiosidade, o pastor Armando, ele é lá da Terra Boa, não é? 